My name is Bernard Ashwanden and I'm with Publishing Smarter. One of the things we do is create videos like this one to help people understand how to use their tools more effectively. I'm going to take Microsoft Word and through a style-based environment, configure and set up a document. Then, using ePublisher, I'm going to take that same style-rich document and create output that's totally HTML5 compliant. Word displays all of the styles inside the home menu, but there's also a styles task pane that can be opened and docked on your screen. I'm going to drag and drop the pane onto the right side of the Microsoft Word application. To reformat a paragraph using a new style, first click anywhere in the paragraph. Once a paragraph is selected, just click inside the style pane in order to apply the new format. The paragraph is reformatted and then you can continue to make changes inside your document. Styles like Title and Heading 1 also pay dividends in a couple of areas that we're going to see shortly. I'm also going to change the selected range to be numbered. In the current view, I'll make one more change in order to configure this paragraph as a Heading 1. Word gives you the ability to display documents using different views. Configurations such as the Outline view also allow you to do a lot more with that source document. Right now I have a decent amount of information on the screen and that can get difficult to manage. So I'm going to set it up to show first line only. This changes the appearance of what's on the screen and tightens it up so that it's a little easier to work. Next, I'm going to go in and do the exact same type of change that I've previously done in making some of the content into a heading one. I could reformat the information using the styles pane or I can use the drop-down where body text is displayed in order to apply different levels. And these correspond to heading ones and twos and threes and so on. There's going to be an interesting change in a moment when I make this into a level one, which is equivalent to a heading one. In the styles pane, you can see that the heading one is set up to have white text with a blue background. But in the outline view, I don't actually get to see the background. The text is all there. It's just formatted white with a white background in the outline view. Now, depending on the version of Word you're using, these types of things might change a little, but with older versions, this could be problematic. I'm going to show you a way around this. I mentioned that using the pre-configured styles has an additional set of benefits. Here's one of them. By looking through the different style set options that are available, you can reconfigure your document with a single click. I'm going to change to the traditional format option, and you're going to see that the headings, which currently have a white with blue background, are going to be reconfigured. With that being done, I'm going to change my view back to the outline. Now the heading Work With Body Content is visible because it has that blue color. I'm going to change one more paragraph and I'll use the drop down in order to make it into a level one. And then I'm going to scroll to the top of the document in the outline view so that you can get a good idea of all of the main headings. The outline view also makes it really easy to reorganize information. Because I've used styles, I can quickly take an entire chunk of information and drag and drop to rearrange it. Currently, the content is a main level heading, a heading one, but I can promote and demote it very quickly as well. Reorganizing information through drag and drop or using the arrows is very easy. Take advantage of using styles and the outline view to reorganize or to promote and demote information inside your document. Do this early on and it becomes a really powerful tool to organize your information. Another great benefit of style-based information is the ability to automatically insert and develop a table of contents. Just before the main heading, I add an empty paragraph, and then I'm going to click on References. References contains a drop-down for table of contents. I'm going to just insert a built-in automatic table of content type, but down at the bottom, you can see that there is an option to insert table of contents, which would allow you to further customize and configure this. There you have it. A document has been set up and configured inside Word with styles. Using the outline view, it's been reorganized and tweaked. And because of the styles, I was able to do that very quickly. 
I was able to reformat the appearance, and I was able to build a table of contents. There's a lot more to this though. Let's move on and see how we can take the content that's all style based and publish it to content such as HTML5. The tool you see on screen now is WebWorks ePublisher Designer. And taking that style rich Word document and converting it to something called Reverb HTML5 output is really simple. What Reverb HTML5 allows me to do is create content that's going to dynamically adjust itself based on the viewer's device. So the experience with a phone, a tablet, or a computer is going to be customized even though it's all the same content behind the scenes. Let's get started with a new project. I'll just take a moment to set up the project name and also set up a target name. The output type that I'm going to create is that HTML5 I mentioned. I'm going to choose WebWorks Reverb, but remember, it's more than just an HTML5 output. This also senses the type of device that's being viewed and will automatically reconfigure your output to give the viewer the optimal experience. Now that I've set up my initial dialog, I'll click Next. That Word document that I created a while ago, I'm going to add it to the project. I could have added multiple Word documents, but I'm just going to work with the one and then click Finish. WebWorks now does a relatively quick scan, identifies the information, and now the software is ready to be put to work. I mentioned that I could have added multiple files, but I only added one, the file management Word document. So I'll click on it. Now let's take a preview of what the styles have converted as. WebWorks takes a couple of seconds and then it generates all of the preview. WebWorks does a great job of capturing all of the information from the styles in the Word source. Notice between contents and save a document, the original table of contents entries from the Microsoft Word document have been removed. This is done automatically by WebWorks. The reason for it is that WebWorks will do a much better job rebuilding a table of contents based on the type of output you're generating than what the Word source would do. We'll see how that works in a moment. The preview also serves another great function. Here I'm going to click in the title, File Management. WebWorks has its own style designer and that automatically updates to show that the paragraph style I've clicked in is a title. I can use the preview and click in any paragraph style. Heading one is currently set up with a default appearance from Word, but I'm going to change the text so that there's a combination of yellow text with a black background. I'm only showing you a very small selection of changes that can be made, but if you're using the software, feel free to experiment and take a look at the options. Again, a lot of options, but I'm going to go with yellow. I've redefined the text color, but I also wanted that black background. You'll see that I have the option for custom and web. Once I set up colors, all my I'm just going to go with a I'm going basic to generate black. all outputs so that I can see what this would actually look like in my browser. Just like when I built the preview, it takes a couple of seconds to generate the output. Once it's done, I can click on yes, and view the resulting output. The output opens up in my browser and I have a table of contents that's automatically generated running down the left hand side. In my output, I have the yellow text with the black background and I also have that automatically generated table of contents which dropped the unneeded page numbering that would have been from the source Word document and instead WebWorks has optimized it for the online output. The functionality of the table of contents isn't in dispute, but notice at the top it has the word contents and it actually doesn't have a link to my file management title. Let's go back and reconfigure that aspect of the output as well. Remember that in the preview, I can just click in any paragraph. Since I clicked inside the title file management, the paragraph styles automatically jumps to title and I'm going to switch to my options. After scrolling down in the options, I'm going to configure the table of contents level. This default configuration doesn't do it for me. Instead, I'm going to configure this so that my title is my first level inside the table of contents. Once that's done, I'll click in contents. I don't feel that it makes sense 
to have the TOC heading, which is now reflected in the paragraph styles, showing up inside my generated output table of contents. Let's change it. Again, I don't like the auto detect for this setting. Instead, I decide that I want none for the table of contents. Then I'll click generate all and we'll see what the output looks like. Take a look in the top left. Notice that contents is gone, which is exactly what I wanted, and file management has been added. At least in the table of contents, file management is added and the word contents is gone. Watch what happens when I click file management. It shows up, but the word contents is at the bottom of this text because I've removed it from the table of contents, but I didn't actually remove it from all of the generated output. Additionally, things like save, create, and close are currently equal to file management in that table of contents. With my TOC heading still the active paragraph style, I'm going to scroll up in the options. Now I can go in and disable the ability to generate output for this specific paragraph style. I also want to make one more change to those heading ones. So in my preview, I'm going to click Save a Document. If you recall, my heading ones were all equal to my title inside the generated table of contents. Instead of using the auto detect value, I'm going to hard code a second level table of contents entry for my HTML output. Since my title is set up to be a level one and this heading is going to be a level two, you'll see some noticeable changes in the output. And, of course, I go and I generate all. Now, in the resulting output, I have a single primary table of contents entry for file management. When I click it, the table of contents expands and you can see save, create, and close. But in my document, I can also see file management with the text, but it no longer has that table of contents heading inside the text. Because remember, I set it up to not generate the output. My table of contents has close a document, which when I click, shows me the topic with that yellow text, black background. Right now though, my screen is sized as if it was on a tablet or on a desktop type of a computer. What if this was displayed on a phone? Remember, I said that Reverb gives you dynamic output that will adjust based on the type of device that's being used to view it. Take a good look at what happens on screen to things like your icons, your table of contents, even the layout when we resize the browser and imagine it as if it was on a phone. The resized version automatically puts the navigation tools across the top, hides away the table of contents, still shows me all of the text with the formatting, and actually in the background, you can see that WebWorks ePublisher is still up and running. There's also some cool features in here. I still have my table of contents, so I can just expand it and click on File Management. There is a proper navigation system with arrows at the top to move to the next or the previous topic. And a powerful search feature is also included. You can type pretty much anything you want into the dialog. As you type, the search window automatically updates. In this video, I've shown you a bunch of different things. I started off with a Word document. In that file, I took text and I started applying styles. I worked with the outline view, I changed the appearance and the styles, I promoted and demoted information, built a table of contents. That document then was converted using WebWorks ePublisher Designer into the Reverb HTML5 output that you see on screen. Remember, that content doesn't have to look exactly the same as the word source. By default, it takes advantage of all the work that you've done using styles. But if you decided that you want to change the entire look and feel, you can use a visual interface to very easily customize the appearance of your content. And because Reverb is set up for mobile devices, it will automatically detect whether somebody is viewing content on a laptop or a desktop machine, a tablet or a phone, and make adjustments for you in order to optimize whatever it is that you